Hey, right now we're about halfway between Burns, Oregon and Nampa, Idaho. And just driving alongside the road and, you know, as far away as that is, I can actually feel the heat from here. It's amazing. So we're gonna actually head that way. On location, Oregon Fire, Yowza. Driving from Bend, where I live, Oregon, to Nampa, Idaho. And this is just roaring over here. I mean, it's hotter than hell right now where, where I'm standing. This is right alongside the road. So, man, this is hot. So, the whole freaking state's on fire. The whole Pacific Northwest. Amazing. Well, David Hart, those are amazing videos. I can't imagine the experience you have there. Uh, for those who don't know David, he is lives in Bend, Oregon. He's a friend of mine who is the founder and CEO of Ram Air International. David, how are things going in Oregon these days? Smoky, a little hard to breathe these days. Other than that, they're going well. Yeah. No, I, I can't imagine the experience and what we just saw in the video, you're right there by the fire. Um, you're kind of like the man in the field uh, reporting and that's what you're doing today on Straight Talk with us. So thank you for that. But uh, you sent me some images of the experience, the wildfires that are going across uh, much of North America, at least on the West Coast, up in Canada, I believe as well. So crazy situation, but uh, let's talk about what you've seen. All right, David, so let's look at some of these images. Here's the first one. Um, I don't know, it looks like you're on top of the clouds here. Those must be trees down below the mountain, but a fire in the background. Tell us about this. Right, now this particular uh, photo was taken right around a town called Hepner, which is in Eastern Oregon, almost bordering Idaho. I was on a trip to Idaho at this time. I did not specifically go out to find this fire, but that's the way it's been out here in the Pacific Northwest lately. You don't need to find the fires, they'll find you. And as we're driving along, you could see this glow in the background. And I had to get out and take a look at it and I could feel the heat right away, even from that distance. I could feel the heat from that coming toward me. What you're seeing down below is sagebrush and then you got the mountains and then the fire beyond that. Okay, um, I know I call this a mountain. You might call it a hill since you're closer to the real mountains, but what's going on here? And, and how long does it take for this to recover this type of devastation? Well, that photo I took about 10 minutes after I took the photo that we just saw. That is the fire. The name of that fire was called the Racehorse Fire. It burned 512 acres over the course of two days. And uh, it hadn't been closed off. The roads hadn't been closed off because it was so brand new when we stumbled across it. In fact, as we began to exit the fire area, that's when we saw the first responders begin to come in. All right. And here's another one. I have to say, that's an impressive picture. You might submit that for a publication, maybe win an award. But, uh, you know, I have to think, David, when you're with people in the area, you know, that gathering of old people at McDonald's. <laughs> just kidding. Right. What do you guys talk about? How does this, is this just what everyone's consumed by? Well, real quick about that photo. Um, my travel partner, who is my passenger, I pulled over and I said, I got to get this photo. And she's like, you're crazy. You can't do that. Just park along right in the middle of a wildfire. I'm like, okay, I'm crazy, but I'm doing it. So yeah, you know, when we talk locally about what's going on out here, it's to the point where it's so common and we're all so aware of it. It really hardly comes up in, in conversation anymore. A few years when these started picking up in uh, frequency and severity. Yeah, it was a lot of talk about it, but we're, it's, it's pretty normal now. Uh, no end in sight, right? They're, they're still raging. This is, uh, we're at the end of August right now. We're at the end of August. We still have 22 fires going in the Pacific Northwest. That's out of 2,933 fires we've had year to date in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I was speaking with Jean Nelson Dean yesterday, who's a public affairs officer for the U.S. Forest Service. And she was telling me that Redmond, Oregon, which is a town 15 miles north of us, which is a main hub in the Pacific Northwest for fire retardant, they have actually broken their record for fire retardant use already this year. And we still have a couple more months to go in the fire season. Crazy. 
Another great picture, uh, David. Good work with that uh, camera of yours. When you're near a fire like this, was it just to one side of you, or is it possible it could surround you? What's the danger here? Well, now, this particular fire uh, was a brush fire. It wasn't a timber fire. So it didn't have the likelihood of jumping across the road. It was just on one side of the road at this point. It was raging hot, though. All right. Uh, this is a graphic you sent to me. Tell us about this and the impact it has on us. Well, when it comes to the reason for the exponential increase in both frequency and severity of wildfires, not just in the Pacific Northwest, but around the world, there are certain factors that come into play. Uh, I had a conversation with our local chief meteorologist, Darrell Winnegar, recently. He was very generous with his time, sat down and talked about how weather affects fires and then how fires create weather. But weather is a byproduct of climate and our climate is changing. That is a fact. Uh, what you're seeing right here is a graph showing the carbon dioxide level in the Earth's atmosphere going back 800,000 years. You'll see it goes in peaks and valleys steadily. It's always changing. So climate change is not a new thing. Climate has always changed. It's just the severity with which it's changing. If you look at uh, the far right of that image, uh, you'll see right around the Industrial Revolution is where it just skyrockets straight up. Um, right there at 2016, our, uh, our CO2 levels on the earth were in the upper 300s. Today, they're 417 and they're just climbing. Now, what happens is the reason that, these, uh, that this plays a role in these wildfires is this elevated temperature causes droughts. Uh, it it uh, increases severity of weather. So there's lightning storms. The majority of the storms we have here in the Pacific Northwest are lightning caused. So it all just plays out in order to create this, this uh, what we have going on here. And then, well, you're gonna get to something here in a minute that I'll touch upon. All right. Uh, th this is an image you sent me to me as well. Now, I don't know how you doctored these numbers, but these can't be real. I did a good job on that, didn't I? <laughs> you sure did. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's a really staggering image right there. Uh, if you go down to uh, the bottom there, Lytton, Canada, uh, that 121, that's a higher temperature than has ever been reached in the history of Europe or South America. And it was in Canada. Staggering. Yeah, I don't even think there's air conditioning in many of these homes in these areas. I live in central Oregon where it gets hot. I don't have air conditioning. I bet those guys, majority of them don't. So they were, they were suffering. Hard to imagine. So the jet streams are a couple hundred miles per hour uh, streams of air that travel across the earth. They are generated by both the temperature differences between the poles and the tropical zones and the rotation of the earth. They both play a role in this. What we're looking at right here is what we call an omega block. It's called omega because it replicates the Greek uh, symbol of the omega. And what happens is we get a block of the jet stream because of that high pressure area right smack in the middle there, which, which is the result of super high temperatures. So it blocks that jet stream from being able to just push that high temperature out of the way which is, would have been the case uh, years ago. But now we're getting more and more of these omega blocks where we're holding those high temperatures due to high pressure in place for days and even weeks. That's why we're getting these extended periods of high temperature. So let's, let's talk about this picture. This will be our last one. Okay. So David, on this picture, uh, it's a view from looks like a mountain or a, or a peak or something, but hazy. What's going on here? Is that, I guess there's fire around there. Right, that is in Bend. I actually took that photo yesterday. And uh, that's just to give an indication of how smoky it is out here in Central Oregon. Typically from that vantage point, you get a really clear view of the city. You can see the horizon, blue skies. You can see the Cascade Range. And here your, your visibility is just nothing. And it's very, 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 you choke yeah. up. So, so what does this do to indoor air quality and restoration efforts? I imagine removing smoke residue is a big business right now. It is. It is. Uh, a lot of the restoration companies out here are gravitating toward the wildfire aspects of uh, restoration, which 
one may think that it is uh, the same thing as doing like an interior structure fire uh, smoke restoration, but it does have differences and some pretty good size differences um, because the smoke is coming in passively rather than actively. It's, it's, not, it's not generated inside the structure and then pushed into the uh, structure and contents, but rather it comes in from the outside. So it does have differences in the way that it's restored. Well, David, thank you so much. We're going to wrap up today's episode with a final video you sent. Let's enjoy this amazing coverage. I'm up here on what's called Pilot Butte in Bend, Oregon. It's a place where people come from all over to check out Central Oregon. Uh, you can see for miles and miles and miles the Cascade Range and uh, way out on the horizon. And today you can't even see the town down there. It's so thick with smoke. We have a air quality index of 131 today, which is the way it's been uh, lately, these last few years. Last year, we had a few days that uh, got in excess of 500. And we don't even know what it was because 500 is the cutoff point. Anything beyond that is uh, off the charts. So this is what I hate. I hate the term, but I'm gonna use it. This is our new normal. <laughs>